everyone. I'm Vanessa Mirza and I'm directing this festival. It is my great pleasure to have these artists together. Uh, we've been part of what is the DBF online residency, something that was a bit of an adventure <laughs> for all of us. And I'm very glad to be joined by Dom Von Hyun, who's a associate artist, a studio director for the festival, but um, has also been leading our residency program. And uh, this year he had a very special concept and he's gonna share a little bit about that. Um, we have with us Zoe, Amma, Sabita, Ryan, Pierre as well, and Tommaso, who's um, worked on the edit for this um, visual. Um, so yeah, before we get uh, first impressions from the artists, maybe Dom, you can go into a little bit about the concept. Um, yes. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. I can definitely <clears throat> also as well be a resident artist if you'd like. <laughs> and, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, thank you to all the artists uh, who contributed to the, the concept. Um, I think it was it's something very different that we hadn't done together before. For those of you who have worked with us before at Dance Bridges um, on our residency um, um, projects, this was definitely very different <clears throat> and act almost counterintuitive of what we normally do so i think it was i think for me it was quite exciting to try to explore new territories with you and um, <clears throat> i must say through kind of the years that we've been together i'm from many of you almost uh, maybe almost 10 years now or eight eight, eight years um in, in and out of every edition and um, i think we've uh, what i've really appreciated in these opportunities in the residency is that we're always trying to find new territories. Um, I think the previous cycle in 20, uh, 2019 was also quite, quite, um, um, I would say edgy in terms of the stuff we were exploring together and kind of pushing as many boundaries as possible. So this one was another um, experiment, which I thought was quite uh, exciting for me. And again, a huge thank you to all your contribution. And again, briefly, just about the concept, um, we were looking at the notion of using utilizing noise as a form of activism and i coined the phrase physical sound art um, again mainly to try to reshape the narrative of what we are conceiving as the central subjects of the research and, and experiment um, i again i was trying to pull away from the notion of making a physical work that had a complement of sound or music or noise or vice versa looking at noise or sound as a central subject with movement facilitating and even as i was watching the video you, the notion when you kind of resonate with the concept of physical sound art you give immediate value not just to looking at the motion and going oh that's interesting movement but also you're thinking oh those noises are quite interesting as well and so i think that was the basis of the concept and again the the underpinning notion of activism is again more a collective um both singular at the start point and then eventually a collective surging of voices to be risen um, and then amplified as a result of coming together um, and so that, that's more or less the concept yeah i've seen um so this is part of research that dom's been doing um there was another residency that uh, he worked on earlier and when i saw that at first i was like what is this it's so strange <laughs> and the more that i i went into the artistic talks and the kind of research and i was like oh it's super cool but i didn't think i would actually be part of a, a project with um kind of exploring this idea and a focus on dances in india taiwan and the uk so it's been amazing and we've just screened the video so i would love to have some first impressions from anyone <laughs> who who um, was a part of the residency or watched it. Mic's open. <laughs> Don't be oh, shy, those I have to call yeah. names. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Tomazo, do you wanna go first? Okay. Um, I think it was definitely very interesting definitely didn't expect that and it's so different from what we've done over the past editions and it felt a little strange because this time you know like we weren't physically together and we weren't even being guided or given prompts or anything so it was like entirely on us so in terms of performing it was a very different experience especially with the concept like this I think the video was was really cool. Like 
kind of edgy and like super experimental like it's amazing i think people are really going to enjoy this yeah it was so beyond what i could have expected because i've been seeing the cool drive and all the different things and also wondering how tomazo made a choice um with dom and in in positioning and also the placement well what i really loved about the video was kind of this overlap and you know the layering um i use layering when i paint as well and for me that just adds so many more meanings and it was just super cool to to kind of see that and see that come together but yeah tomazo just, uh, but oh, yeah, before perfect. Can I just underpin uh, that this for context for for um, for all the viewers as well? So what Zoe is referencing to is the process itself. Just to kind of give a general background, was for this concept. That's what I was saying from from the beginning was that it was almost counterintuitive. What we normally do is that uh, in I think in this period of looking at works making via Zoom or online digital format. I felt that everyone was trying to get closer together in terms of interacting, even if it's screen upon screen. And I want to do the opposite to see what happens if we did not have any direct interaction at all in so, insofar as um, guidance and so forth. And so it was definitely um, task based, which were completely uh, uninterrupted. Uh, there was no feedback from me whatsoever. The task were the task, and the artist had the autonomy to respond to the task, whichever impression they felt um, was a response to the provocation, and hence the the comments by Zoe that it, it, it's uh, very, I guess. Yeah, I, I'll just add to this because this is something that um, we discussed a bit in the beginning, and at first I wasn't sure, but I was like, yeah, I think actually the artists there they're at this point where they could take this on and they could, you know, even though it might be a little scary at first, but it's also that we don't um, only want to like, you know, nurture too heavily, but we want you to explore and kind of, yeah, just birth your own creativity. And I felt this was an amazing kind of way to to do that. But yeah, Tommaso, <laughs> let's have your comments as editor. <laughs> you need to unmute. Yeah, no, for me, because um, I took part in this research already once um, with another team, and it was, uh, I think it's it's very much, it's very much similar to a process that would normally happen in the, and this, I say this because I've worked with them for the last seven years now. Um, it would be very similar to actually the process that happens at the beginning of any research that we go through. Like there isn't, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, much. Uh, like Dan gives you a concept no normally at the very beginning, and he gives you ideas and images and inputs. And then what we do in the studio is just we just give as much input on the topic as we can without really mm -hmm. any any counter response from Dom like he just at the beginning of each research he's happy to for a very large amount of time to just take information and let it sink in and just let let ideas come to him and see how things move and and then eventually he would select and pin and take things and change them and make them you know um his his own but um yeah I think it was it was very very much similar to what we would have done in a in a studio and for the video um well i just kind of go with the flow i think <laughs> no that's not true that's not true actually it this is also valid this is also valid for the very first time i did the video for the other residency because i was the one who kind of trained Related. around selected and pulled the work together and that it was just through the lens of my understanding so in a way, I feel like I took part of the residency as well, because through the understanding of the of the tasks and the topic, I developed what I thought for me could have been an interpretation. Um, so uh, originally, what I did the first time, um, the inspiration for the first video that I did, and also for this video as well, was um, a work that has been shown to me by this friend, Elaine Michener, and she showed me this video made by George Emanuel Lewis, which is a, an American composer. And this video that he made had this kind of like very, almost like, I don't know, like old school kind of um, way of editing that was very patchy. 
And that I mm -hmm. thought it was really, really cool. And I thought it was really interesting. And so I tried to kind of assimilate that and make it mine and understand how, mm -hmm. how I would develop a work, a visual work uh, yeah. on that line. And yeah. Yeah, I think I want a video editing workshop now. <laughs> <laughs> to start with one thing that I like, I, maybe because I had a lot of stuff. I mean, not as much as last time because we was a smaller mm -hmm. group this time. But the, I had, uh, you know, we had this folder, this mm -hmm. massive folder with all images and, and sounds and ideas. And I just obviously I went through the whole archive. Mm -hmm. And then I just start from one thing that I like, which in this case was um, your video, uh, which I felt it was a very organic and calm um, place to start from where the sound was very um, relaxing and I felt like it was a good place to sit in to start an experience and then from there I started to build up things and yeah I want to say it was quite I got quite lucky because I was trying to video in the marshes and I wasn't quite getting the angle and then there's this bridge which is like this kind of wall and there was a crevice and I fitted my camera, my phone, in that crevice. And that's yeah. how you got the frame. And I was like, oh, I hope my camera doesn't fall, but I'm going to take a risk. <laughs> but I like this other part of it, like with which Dom had said in the beginning, because I was a little bit worried of like, oh, technology wise, will we have, you know, the kind of quality or, you know, devices that's needed. And then this project was based on kind of found objects, both with creating the sound, but also recording. And for me, that kind of relaxed the whole thing a lot and that we were using this kind of in an artistic and creative way so for me that was very liberating i have to say um but how about any of the others do you have any comments at this moment uh, otherwise we'll go into the tasks um and maybe tomazo can bring up those slides um and we can have a little bit of a discussion on how zom created those um which ones you liked which ones you found hard yeah Okay, let's move to the slides. All right, cool. Uh, you guys see? Yep. Lovely. Um, so yeah, Dom, is there anything in particular that made you choose these impulses? And then for the others, it would be great if you just kept your mics open so we can run through things quickly. Um, and you can just, yeah, pop out and say which ones you liked, which ones you tried, um, what it made you think of. I mean, I think for, particularly for me, I mean, these impulses were, again, very connected to uh, the, the social life of, of diverse um, regions and people. And uh, obviously our sounds, although one would assume would be quite similar in so far as everyday activity, but, you know, they're varied. And I think what's most important, in fact, is not even the activity itself. Perhaps some of them are quite mundane, uh, as you can see, uh, brushing your teeth. It's not particularly political. Um, but again, it's the notion of the looking at the simplicity of any sound and any activity as giving huge value to something that can be a subject of a political or a contribution to a or an activist position. So that's why I was, wasn't was really looking for a huge um, task that would kind of be almost very, um, what's the word, very cliché that's a bad, terrible word I just made up, but cliché, <laughs> a very cliché <laughs> of what would be an activist, you know, going into a rally. Of course, that's very obvious. But are we able to conclude that any sound on any level can be contributory, which is almost a common to kind of our social structure, you know, that, um, that there's no such thing as too small to be contributing to the kind of social conversation, I think. Right. So any of the dancers who haven't yet said something, do you want to comment on the tasks? <laughs> and uh, Tomas, maybe you can run through um, the other slides. I think the yeah, first. Yeah. Ryan, Sabita. Uh, yeah. Can I see? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the first task which we got, I was very confused. Like I wanted to try something very different. 
and i also wanted to keep it to simple as simple as possible but very different which no one have tried so i took like almost uh, more time to think and it was i think uh, but i didn't got the proper thing which i really uh, basically wanted but i'm keep so i i i think i'm still searching on it mm, basically nice. this topic noise um, is not something which uh, basically the idea is not something which is very no normal for me so i am like still i'm searching on it and how we can got uh, the correct uh, how i can get, get the correct meaning of the non noise for me this is what i am yeah. ser ser searching yeah. on and um, yeah so much i am back to just the gallery I, you know. yeah continue sabita yeah. yeah because i'm not exactly very ha happy with what i have uh, sent because i think i can do more but i didn't have that much of time so i had to send that uh, yeah. wait till we come to to calcutta <laughs> yeah you know. i mean <laughs> this is then this is just a one segment of the research and we can definitely keep expanding yeah. beyond yeah. and beyond later and i think it could be a nice interesting um starting point for our next research and residency yeah. really make more noises together and i think it should be fun but i mean i think i i love the idea that it it made a kind of ex expansion in your mind you think oh perhaps i want to try different things and that was partially why i didn't want to interrupt your um autonomous kind of responses i didn't want to essentially guide you into a position that perhaps i would do and so it's nice that you, your your mind was splitting between different directions uh, which means that you're really you know you're sensitively thinking about the questions and how to respond to it so that's nice to hear actually and you wouldn't do this i mean that's also my my impression but you just wouldn't do this in a studio anyway like you yeah. just very very exactly. often you just you just very very careful uh to um control exactly the amount of information that you give us this is i'm talking about for the company when we work with the company in london mm -hmm. he's really careful like about how much information he gives us because he wouldn't really want to distort our understanding and our personal understanding of of the idea of the concepts or or even like sometimes this place of disorientation and this place of not knowing and not quite being sure it is a place that leads you to take initiative and maybe from that initiative new new images and new concepts and new sounds in this case can can just blossom can just happen and then and then and then that could be for dom an input to to say oh you know what i actually didn't think about that and i wouldn't have thought about that if i if i hadn't stopped myself from giving you too much information and, and that wouldn't it, it wouldn't have led you where where it led you and it wouldn't have led us collectively at the end of the research where we are i think yeah yeah ryan amma would you like to add anything don't be shy Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So it was so interesting, and at the same time for me, uh, it was a, like it was not something very like uh, apart from our life. It's very basic, and it's a day-to-day -day life thing. The noise, and after the reading the mail and all those things, and I was like also aware, like okay, in my day-to-day -day life, when when will I make any noise? So it it has become a habit now, like. <laughs> when i will do something i will okay that is the noise and i can make a dance out of it so this thing is keep uh, coming to the mind and on those days it was um, i was so aware like the everything i was like keep searching like okay i like every everything like the noises i was like really uh, searching for the noises then it was the, the surprise was it wasn't that uh, something that so uh, um, separate from our life it was our in our life only and we were not con uh, like uh, thinking and uh, the, like concern about those things so mm. so i really it was really interesting to know a part of our life life which we already had it and we didn't know it like the using of <laughs> these uh, noises so i really liked it <laughs> yeah kind of deeper level of just perception and awareness um even for me for sure yeah ryan you were saying yeah so it all started uh, the, the thing the noise the this uh, part of the residency 
all this noise thing it was not new to me because initially the stage and the seeds were in 2000 back in 2015 the first residency when uh, dom uses uh, the noises i i prefer call it a sound because uh, at that time when he came to the uh, we came to calcutta so he brought a composer with him uh, yeah, uh, martina, martina. Yeah, so she, I saw her and how she was taking the sounds from everything, like a train, walking people and everything. Then after the final product I heard, then I realized that uh, everything that makes a noise or a sound is not a noise. It's a music. It has a pattern. Every noise has a pattern. When the pattern becomes a rhythm, rhythmic becomes a music. So every sound is a music. It's not a noise. It's kind of a noise, but... It becomes a pattern if you listen, listen to everything, everything, every beat, if there is a rhythm between uh, in every kind of sound that comes out from everything in the day to day life or any kind of stuff. So some like that, that happened. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember Ryan's revelation when he first discovered that you can make, you can make music out of any sound in this anywhere. <laughs> Yes, I mean. um, oh, that inspired that inspired me very like very like too much and i started <laughs> so start researching using sound i made some and i still researching on and it becomes like a simple drop a simple drop of coin a simple drop of water a simple something that makes sounds are very very like you can, you can it's amazing that how it can be traveled to the air and comes to the ear and makes a rhythmic sound to and to an artist who are dancer who are moving can like it's just the how we interpret that sound or the music to everybody it's a sound to us in our music is the emotion yeah with the sound and it becomes an ex the way of expressing ourselves to the, to the limit of our freedom Thanks so much, Ryan, for sharing that. I want to just quickly um, share some of the feedback from one of our Taiwanese artists, Shin Tian, uh, who says that she really actually liked this idea of the jam. Uh, she felt like we were creating alone, but also together, and that was really cool. Um, and then through the task that she started to feel how she senses where she belongs, actually, and uh, what she wants to present. Um, I read also how she was saying she was trying not to be influenced by other people's videos, <laughs> but at some level she was, <laughs> even though she was being different, she, she still felt the connection. So in a way, it was like a sense of empathy um, that was created that she quite liked. Um, and then she said, I think I prefer being a director to a performer. <laughs> Another part of them. Um, and she really enjoyed it. It's her first time to work with them. Um, and there were some questions through which... Um, even though she always did not uh, like understand at first, like she, we had some minimal kind of conversations and chats, which she found helpful. And um, yeah, I'm going to read this part. She said, I used to record sounds with meaning. At least it's meaningful to me. This time I start to record some meaningless sounds, some meaningless noise. And I found everything that we can see, we can hear all have meaning, meaning by our consciousness. But um, how will it become? How do we change this? How does our like our thoughts, our feelings, definitions, and these meaningless kind of noises, they're changing all of the time. So in a way, I think relating to a bit of what Ryan was saying, um, and she feels like she can kind of keep growing her practice, keep understanding how these things work, and it really kind of inspires her creativity. So <laughs> it's been super cool. Pierre, would you like to say something before we close? Any impressions <laughs> from... Um, um yeah i mean i love it it's just really i think that's what you said but like seeing everyone is their own environment it's quite beautiful i mean obviously we meet going to india but it feels it feels really like we're connecting in other ways and for me i like that i think in the in editing is quite beautiful because obviously the friends merge and so you have this you know i thought for me it was quite beautiful as well the beginning when you when you're there vanessa and suddenly you cross with uh, i think it's ryan or someone else ryan, yeah. Alita, <laughs> or, and, then, and then suddenly it feels like you're both in india and both in in uh, in the uk and i think that's the, for me yeah. I just feel like that's all this connection really and then uh yeah i think the research on sound is interesting obviously because uh 
it just your brain goes really a bit crazy. It's like, oh my god, what is that? You're, you're trying to understand what what is that sound, where it comes from, and then suddenly maybe it doesn't matter so much. It's more like the impressions that it creates. So yeah, I mean, it's quite powerful actually what you can do out of all these materials. So for me, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tommaso, did you have something you wanted to add? Tommaso? No. no? <laughs> it's like, okay. Zoe, how about you? Anything on the task or anything else that you'd like to leave us with? <laughs> okay. Um, about the task, when I first read it, I was a little uh, not confused, but I was wondering what I could do. And I think like my, my videos were like quite a mix because in some, I, like, I didn't know how performative to be. So in some of them, I tried to dance or improv, but in some of them, I just tried to do, you know, just tried to be there. So I think that was a very, uh, I, I don't, know, don't know the right word, but I think. A bit of a contrast. How, that yeah, yeah, and how, <laughs> how I interpret, how we yeah. all interpreted it. And um, yeah, I tried not to see anybody else's clips until I uploaded mine because I didn't <laughs> want to be influenced or think, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> it's crazy how we all want approval. <laughs> we all have this weird sense. And John was like, no. <laughs> and I was trying to be as neutral as possible. And Ashish, I remember, was like, but there must be a right or <laughs> wrong. It can't be that it's all <laughs> Can I say, uh, I have, I have, because I was reading the tasks again. Right. And in fact, there isn't, there isn't any reference uh, that says that, in which Dam asks you to, to dance. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, there is no, there is no part of the task that says that you should be dancing. He says something yeah. like, um, uh, do, do, do. Respond. You and how your body or yeah. other, you and other bodies or like yeah. your body and... according to other bodies so yeah. like, it's funny because I had people in the other residency like doing showing showing something like pouring water or like um, mm -hmm. dusting their clothes or just walking and I don't know mm -hmm. I just I just find it interesting it, it is for me like it is a way to reappropriate sound mm -hmm. voice and movement for the sake of speaking singing and moving mm -hmm. just you know just as, as, a, as in in their raw form yeah um, and i think it's uh there is really cool things and it can still be called dance if... yeah of course i was just gonna say so like why do we have to limit what is dance and yeah. i think we're way beyond that definitely yeah, in dance bridges we don't <laughs> So it was, it, everything was really welcome. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, you had something? Uh, the thing is that, yeah, I have read all the tasks and literally the Thomas said that there's no written, you have to do a perform or something like that. So what I did was that, so when you're in a train, like a local train, it's when it's very packed up and you can see you're in a position, you're dancing with the movements of the other people who are pushing you. <laughs> So if you're holding a rail over there and they will be pushing you just doing this and that and this, you'll see you'll see you're doing a, literally you're dancing but you're getting a, you're giving gaps to people to go down coming up and you see it is i saw that when uh, when i was in the train i've seen that it, it looked like a dance you're literally dancing for every second you're not just stopping for one to get it done you're just moving continuously you're just pushing and everything it's also packed up train so that's why i'm just saying that I found it that thing very interesting. So I put it over there. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm going to ask Tom if you have any uh, thing that you'd like to say. Maybe we will need to close this meeting just for limitations of time. So yeah, any closing words for audiences or artists? No, I mean, no closing, major clarion of closing words other than, again, just to reiterate that I think why it was important that I, I had such minimal interaction with you. Again, is part, I guess, for me, was part of the, the concept itself. I mean, although the minimalism is, I think, for me, quite powerful, the idea that your voice and your statement are super valid and they are very important as part of the conversation on just the theme of activism. And so, again, for me to have interrupted that would have been um, counter um, the concept. 
And so again, it was more of, um, I guess, emboldening you with autonomy, but really self, um, what's the word, self-value in terms of your voices. And so it, it was, yes, if you wanted, if your character is everything for me in life is just one big dance, dance away, you know, or for me, what everything is very minimalist and my action as, you know, turning on the hot water was as a part, you know, then, then completely equally valid as part of the conversation. But mainly the point is that we're contributing to the conversation. And so that, that was, that was the whole reason for that kind of lack of uh, guidance there or so perception <laughs> lack of guidance. Um, yes. But I think again, overall, I, I, I would really, I think would be wonderful to carry on this research. Um, one could say someone like Ryan, who's been with us since the very beginning could say, this is a continuous research that he'd already started, but this is really stretching it really further and really incorporating it further into our research and experiments. Whereas before you could see there was a slightly division between the process of the sound music making process and then the, the movement we tried to discover in the studio. Here, we're now slowly merging them and having synergy to make them as equal subjects. And then the question is what we can do together in 2024, hopefully we can travel back, yes. how we can make that um, something more audially and visually spectacular. Mm -hmm. It sounds amazing. So thank you again so much, uh, Dom and all of you, Tomazo, Zoe, Ryan, Pierre, Amar Sabita for joining us today. Uh, thanks to our listeners and audience. Um, if you have questions or feedback, you can send us a mail at dancebridgesfestival at gmail.com. We also have something called the DBF Lounge um, that you could join, um, which will be tomorrow. <laughs> So hope to see you soon. Thanks again and ciao. Bye. Thank you.